Hello, this is CJ Hoyle. Today is Monday, August the 2nd, 2021, and I'm here in Bridgentine Cove in Ontario Place. I've got my Dagger Redline kayak with me here, which I transported down to the water using my bicycle and bike trailer. And my plan for this afternoon is to paddle this kayak in the west direction along the Toronto waterfront over to the Humber River, where I'll paddle up the Humber River until I get to Bloor Street before I turn around and come back to here. All right, so here I am in the water, starting things out in a body of water known as Bridgentine Cove, where you can see there's a few other people out paddling this afternoon. And I head over that way, under those bridges towards Budweiser Stage. So here I'm paddling past Budweiser Stage, which used to be known as the Molson Amphitheater, which is a concert venue. And just beyond there is the North Ontario Place Marina. Here you can now see the five exhibit pods of Ontario Place, with the Cinesphere hiding behind. If you haven't already seen it, I made a separate narrated video where I paddled all around the lagoons of Ontario Place. So I'm now paddling past the West Island of Ontario Place, and just to the north of here is the Exhibition Grounds, or Exhibition Place, where you can see the X-Place wind turbine spinning. At the end of the West Island, there's a breakwater, which stretches out this way, and it actually runs all the way along the shoreline, aside from a couple of gaps in it, and it goes all the way to the Humber River Arch Bridge, which you can see up there in the distance, which is where I'm heading to. So here I've reached the first gap in the breakwater, and over there on the other side you can see that the water has much bigger waves than the calmer waters over here, which of course is the advantage of having the breakwater. Up ahead there you can see two people who are kayaking in foldable Oru kayaks. Over on the other side of the channel is the Martin Goodman Waterfront Trail, where I've ridden my bike many times. I've now reached the Argonaut Rowing Club. These people are kayaking in a tandem foot-powered kayak. Through this gap over here, once again, we get a preview of the Humber River Arch Bridge where I'm heading for. And you can see that, just like before, the water on the other side of the breakwater is much more rough than it is over here. Over here on the right is the Toronto Sailing and Canoe Club. I'm now passing the Boulevard Club, which is a yacht club that's also known for their sports. These two birds here are cormorants, and right here there's also a mother mallard duck with two baby ducklings sitting underneath of her. This place over here is called Palace Royal, and it looks like they might be hosting a wedding there today. So I've now reached the beginning of Sunnyside Beach, which seems to be a relatively popular spot today. Today's the Monday of the August long weekend, and things in the city this weekend just seem a lot quieter than usual. It probably means that a lot of people have gone away for the weekend. Even though you can see a fair number of people on the beach, I've seen it a lot more packed than that before. Sunnyside Beach includes the Sunnyside Bathing Pavilion, which was built in 1922, and three years later they built the Gus Rider Swimming Pool, which at the time apparently was the largest swimming pool in the world. Offshore from the pavilion, there are a bunch of these dragon boat canoes parked. This bird here is a great egret. So I'm now at the part of the waterfront that has a bunch of condo buildings around Windermere Avenue, and I'm getting pretty close to the Humber Bay Arch Bridge now. So I've just about reached the Humber Bay Arch Bridge here, and those big tall condo buildings over to the left are part of an area of the city known as the Humber Bay Shores. It's good to see lots of people walking and biking across that bridge. I was noticing earlier when I was paddling beside the Martin Goodman Trail that it didn't seem like there was very many people using it, but then I realized that the active TO on Lakeshore Boulevard West was happening this weekend, which is probably where most of the people were. So from here at the bridge, I'm gonna turn and start working my way paddling up the Humber River hopefully to get as far as Bloor Street. There's a rule that every time you paddle underneath this bridge, it's mandatory to take a selfie. Up ahead, I've got some bridges to paddle underneath of. The first one is Lakeshore Boulevard West. The second one is for the Gardner Expressway. The third one is for the CN Rail Line. And the fourth bridge is for the Queensway, which is the western extension of Queen Street. There's a very cool looking clear bottom kayak. Over on my right, I'm going past the road, which is called Riverside Drive. The Lower Humber River has a lot of marshland, and you can see there's a lot of people 
out on the water today. Earlier this year when I was paddling past this spot in the river, I saw a deer standing right here. There are a select few homes along the Humber which have their own water access docks. Probably a lot of stairs to climb down to get to that one. So over there on the left is the Humber River Boat Launch and just beyond there is the Toronto Humber Yacht Club. This yacht club has lots of boats. Even though they call it a yacht club, it seems like most of them are relatively small. Also no sailboats on account of the masses probably wouldn't fit underneath of all those bridges down at the mouth of the river. Coming around this corner here, I can see the Bloor Street Bridge peeking out over there. Just beyond the Bloor Street Bridge, there's a lower bridge, which carries the Line 2 Bloor Danforth subway. Unlike on the Don River, the subway and the road use two different bridges. So here you can see those two bridges running side by side. The road bridge was built back in 1923, making it almost 100 years old. Underneath the subway bridge, there's a launch point, which is a common place for people to launch their canoes and kayaks and paddle boards. There's also a company that rents equipment from this location. So if you don't own your own, you can rent one here. There's also a parking lot just over there as well. Further upstream from here, things start to get pretty shallow, but I'll see how much further I can make it in the kayak. So I didn't make it too much further upstream. Like I said, things get shallow and the current also gets pretty strong. But at least from here I can see the old mill bridge. This bridge was built in 1916. Even though it looks a lot older than the other, there's only an eight year difference. So my plan from here is to turn around and head back to where I started from. My paddling distance so far has been about nine kilometers. So I've got pretty much that same distance to go to get back. This is the second of two houseboats that I've seen motoring up the river. From here there's a nice view of the houses that are built up at the top of the valley overlooking the river. There's a beaver there swimming right towards me. And that right there is a muskrat. I'm very lucky to be seeing all these things today. Here are some more people in transparent kayaks. So I've just made a detour into this little bay down here and I think I can see a turtle over there on that log. So I've just about made it back to the bridges here and there's another common launching point here at the South Kingsway boat launch. Mandatory selfie. And now that I've reached the choppy waters of Lake Ontario again, I'll head into the sheltered channel there. Lots of people paddling through the channel here, including some outrigger canoeists and someone rowing. Look at this watercraft. What's that called? I asked him what it was called and he told me that the place where he rented it from called it a hoagie. And to complete my water mammals hat trick, there's a mink. So here I've made it back to where I started and hopefully my bike and the trailer are still left where I locked them. My total paddling distance this afternoon was 18.3 kilometers. All right, so I've now got my kayak loaded back up onto my trailer and I'm ready to head back home. Even though all the places where I paddled today were places that I paddled before, I still really enjoyed it. I got really lucky with the wildlife that I saw today, and I also really enjoyed seeing all those other interesting types of watercraft. Hope you enjoyed following along from home as well. Until my next adventure, if you watched all the way to the end of this video, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section below, and thanks for watching.